All right. Now we are going to see on how we can call apex imperatively and what's the difference. Let's read this through. An alternative to calling apex with at wire is to call apex imperatively. Call apex imperatively when you need to control the invocation of read operations and when you modify records. To call apex imperatively, you invoke apex one time from a component's JavaScript file instead of delegating control to the LWC engine. In return, you get a JavaScript promise. Like we uh, learned before about JavaScript promises in the previous video. Uh, not exactly the previous video before this, but multiple videos ago. As you do when you call an LDS function imperatively. Now, also the advantage of this, you can call both cacheable and non-cacheable Apex method imperatively. And to refer to cache for the cacheable method, we just simply call the method again. So this is an example on how we can call the Apex um, imperatively. And let's just switch to our um, LWC component that I just made. It's slightly different than this because we want to display it onto the record page and I'm, I'm going to show you how we can work on that. So first, please create a new LWC component on your end. I already did. Just right click new. Um, wait, not this one. Right click on LWC here, right? And then create lightning web component and then name it call Apex Imperative or however you want to name it, which will create three files. And we have the JS, the HTML, and the XML file, the meta file. I'm going to open the JS first and let's uh, see through this simple um, example. So I'm going to import lightning element, track API from the LWC library and then import get contact list from our controller that we made on the previous video. So we created number two here, remember? So Salesforce Apex account controller two dot get related contacts. This is the method that we're gonna use, okay? And then same standard stuff. Export a default class Apex imperative method extends lightning element. And we want to track uh, the context and the error variable. And then we want to use the add API decorator so we can pass through the record ID onto the record page and basically pass that to our get contact list um, method that we define on here. A get contact list is on Apex class here number two account controller two, remember from the previous video, let's open that. So this is account controller two, get related contacts. Basically it's passing through the account ID, right? Um, did I close the other file here? So it's passing through the account ID and then we get uh, the result back, the result back here. Okay, and then um, this contact equals the result. So what can we do there? I'm going to open the HTML, the HTML file for this, and um, you can pause the video and type this out on your um, JS file before you deploy it to your Trailhead Playground. Just type this out, and then I'm going to go back to the HTML here, the template. So this is a basic standard um, Lightning template is a lightning card. You can do the title here. I'm just going to do this. Maybe load related contacts, right? And then this is just a div. And then you put a lightning button here. Lightning button label load contacts on click handle load, which will um, call the handle load here. 
the handle load method here, which is basically running the get contact list and passing it back to the contacts variable, which is trackable here. We're tracking it. So any changes that's happening is going to load the new one. That's why we're using the track decorator there. We'll show you on an example, okay? And uh, back to the HTML. And then if the context has data, is it's uh, populated, is returning uh, data, then we basically loop through each contact here, template for each context for item contact. And then the key for the, for the iterable data is the contact ID. And then basically you display the contact name, the contact title, and the contact email. Okay, so I'm going to hold this up. You can please go ahead and type this up on your own um, HTML file. And then go to your XML. Make sure you also change the target to lightning record page and make it exposed to true. Okay, so I'm going to save this guy. Save this guy in the JS as well. And I'm going to right click on here and deploy. Deploy source to org. It's deploying here and okay, successfully ran. So that's deployed. Now let's give it a try. I'm going to flip to our playground here. And this is the account page. Let's edit this page again and grab that new lightning web component we just made using the apex imperative call so i'm going to scroll down here um, call apex imperative i'm going to drag it down on the top and save and go back here That's it. Uh, we have this load related contacts. I'm going to load contacts. Boop. We have Timbar and John Bond. That's it. So that's pretty simple. Now let's go back and see what when what can we do next. So we've done this sample. So now you know how to call Apex imperatively. Next, let's do the challenge together. So we've done this one on the first video even. So let's go ahead and deploy this um, challenge on the next video. Bada bing, bada boom. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange. And do yourself a favor like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it don't take my word watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself bada bing bada boom Thank <laughs> you.